I think we're all set to dive into our topic. And I want to welcome our first speaker, Professor Bazirou Bonfou from the Côte d'Ivoire. He's a doctor of veterinary medicine and, a and has a PhD in epidemiology. In the 90s, he worked in West Africa in the livestock development program for Veterinaires Sans Frontières. Afterwards, he became an epidemiology postdoctoral fellow at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, Zurich, and the Tropical and Public Health Institute. Between 2009 and 2018, he was the managing director of the Centre Suisse de Recherche Scientifique en Côte d'Ivoire and is currently the director of Afrique One. Today, he will be speaking about the asymmetric impacts of and responses to COVID-19 pandemics. And with that, I will give it over to you, Professor. Okay, thank you very much for this nice introduction and the invitation. So I will talk on what I have called the asymmetric impacts of and responses to COVID-19 pandemics. And this asymmetry is looked uh, through uh, or from the African uh, perspectives. So the title, Politics of Public Health, if we look at politics of public health, uh, it has two main objectives. The first one is to improve health, and the second one is to prevent diseases. But if we have look at how uh, the politics of public health have been uh, implemented, we are seeing that improving health has benefited from a lot of resources while preventing diseases is lacking resources, especially in Africa where infectious diseases are still prevalent. So Africa is still struggling to develop the capacity and uh, the re resilience toward those infect uh, uh, infectious diseases. So if we look at the context, we know that the current context of COVID-19 show a complexity and uh, institutional fragmentation. Uh, this was based mainly on the, the borders and we have uh, currently in the world uh, inequalities, borders and frontiers. And we have seen that in most of the countries we have a technology gap. And if you look at uh, the African countries, we have also what we call differential power of state. And uh, in those contexts, we have also conflict and social and political unrest. And it's in this context that COVID-19 have emerged. So we think that the responses of the pandemics depend on this context, the capacity of the country's health systems and the structure of their population. Since we know that the infection does not uh, uh, come uh, or does not impact the population uh, on the homogeneous uh, uh, manner. Another aspect that we consider very important is the resource allocation in this context. Resources are very important, but when we look at the responses to COVID-19, it has been well uh, raised that, uh, by the WHO that uh, Africa will be one of the country or the continent to be uh, hit by the COVID-19. But all the discourses of collaboration and solidarity that has emerged uh, have not been followed by uh, uh, action. And we see that there are uh, a lot of disparities and I will come back to that with uh, the, the, the vaccine. And looking at the context, we have uh, two main barriers. The first one that we are now observing is the profit driven and intellectual property for health being uh, uh, for, 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 for the uh, health being a public good. We consider health as a public good. And for that, uh, uh, the, the intervention should not be uh, mainly profit driven. And we have seen that for some of the diseases, former diseases like uh, the, the polio, where uh, uh, the public health have been considered as a, a, a public good. The second barrier or difficulties is the policy makers uh, the difficulty for the policymaker to see beyond national interest or border due to sometime the vote commitment as we are seeing in, in Africa where uh, our government have taken uh, stringent measures to contain the COVID-19. So I have been asked or we have been asked for some question uh, 
uh, what are the long-term consequences of COVID-19 on health and political system? Uh, the first thing we observe is the trust in information and science and how research can reconcile with society. The trust is in information will become something very important because uh, the level of knowledge on COVID-19 and the trust of people in the government and the health system are more likely to influence future uh, uh, health re related practices. And we are seeing that now where in most of the countries, the responses are not uh, uh, respected because of this lack of trust. The second point is the state security and power. Uh, we have observed that threats from COVID-19 are not uh, only uh, a public health issue, but uh, at uh, a certain scale, it has become a security issues and uh, a potential source of political instability. And African government have understood uh, that and taken stringent measures, compromising sometimes uh, the freedom uh, of people and contributing sometimes to the anger toward the, the, the states because of uh, unpopular uh, de decision. And we have seen that COVID-19 has helped to reinforce uh, the power of uh, uh, most of the states. In that context, we see that there will be a new order of uh, health cooperation uh, starting from uh, WHO uh, where uh, the, a new role need to be found with authority, legitimacy and uh, access to resources to guide uh, policies. The second area for cooperation will be the, the, the business which is currently driving the public health uh, as most intervention measures depend on private sector. And the cooperation between countries currently is affected uh, uh, within a different area uh, since uh, the closure of, uh, of, of borders. And we have also seen that the lockdown and travel restriction have developed the sense of local production and consumption as far as food security is concerned. And there we have a discourse of food so sovereignty and uh, the local consumption discourse that is now uh, uh, very rampant. So the question on nationalism, uh, if the rationalism prevail or not, we'll say that uh, there's a clear disparities or there are clear disparities in vaccine rollout. And this vaccine uh, distribution is something that is reinforcing the, the nationalism. And we think that every nation interest is in universal vaccination like uh, the, the polio. And we are uh, all observing, and you all know that the, the rift between uh, the North and South as far as uh, access to vaccine is uh, concerned. So nationalism, protectionism, isolationism are uh, uh, observed but hindered with the cooperation and solidarity uh, discourses and which is not very good for the current response to COVID-19. So the new form of cooperation will emerge uh, uh, like in this, the South-South cooperation with a strong and silent orientation toward uh, uh, countries like China and Russia by many African countries. And we are seeing for vaccine or diagnostic tools, uh, many countries in Africa are driving or guiding their cooperation toward those two countries. So now what are the main lessons and what can we do? I think it's important that we promote collective action uh, versus competition or individualism to avoid uh, what we call the pocket of COVID-19 uh, virus reservoir that may, may, may cause maybe mutation in the, in the future. We also think that vaccines are necessary but not sufficient. And uh, the world should learn from most of the countries where the infection rate and fatality rate are, are, are low. And uh, we need to favor uh, the non-vaccine or non-drug intervention and uh, show that many other actions are important to, to, to overcome the, 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 the disease. And the world should not fail to consider the evidence of low infection and this fatality rate in sub Saharan Africa, uh, and there is a strong need to support science to understand this phenomena because it can help 
uh, to address the, the, the issue. So in conclusion of my talk, I would say that the public health uh, at the end depends on the economy, which is not alone. The social norm, we need to consider the, uh, the situation of the population which are affected and at the end, the political attitude. So I'm ready to answer to any question if uh, there's, uh, there are. And uh, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to this session. Thank you very much for your attention.